Welcome, everybody, to the H3 Beyond the Experience podcast. Thank you to Dollar Shave Club, Mint Mobile, and ExpressVPN today for sponsoring us. The guest, of course, the great Bill Burr. Hey, here today. I don't know about great. Give me some more. The greatest. greatest. Oh, the yeah. greatest. The greatest guy <laughs> sitting across from you right now. I know. <laughs> Pretty much can close this show, I think. After this yeah, there you go. Honest. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys, and that'll be all. Um, first of all, very excited for you playing Madison Square Garden November 7th. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. You guys can go get tickets now. Billboard.com slash events. Yeah, B-U-R-R. Yes. B-U-R-R. I also want to give you credit for, I mean, F is for family. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. We just uh, wrapped, I guess, production is what you call it, on season three. So mm-hmm. that should be out on Netflix later on this year. They haven't given me a date yet, mm. but... Uh, they have some sort of probably in November because everything you have a lot going on in November. You got your new movie coming out, The Front Runner. I got Thanksgiving. You got Thanksgiving. <laughs> yep. Fuck all one that my, shit. Yeah, How about my shit favorite. That you, actually, you know, if you got yeah, Rivalry yeah. Weekend on yeah. uh, the NCAA. There's a yeah. lot going on for the great yep. Bill Burr, but Madison Square Garden. That's crazy. Is that your? Have you played that venue before? Yeah, one other time. Okay. Uh, I forget one. Uh, 2015, I played it. Mm. So now back and uh, hopefully. Just as good, if not better, than the last time. <laughs> how does it feel? Because that there's like t- almost twenty one thousand seats. Mm-hmm. Now, it, how does it feel playing to that many people versus like two hundred people in a comedy club? Well, it depends on how you seat it. Like, so when I did it, I had the stage on the one side, but now this time I'm doing it in the round, so it's more seats. I don't know how I don't know how many it is, but uh, it's you know what I did the first time was I ended up um, you know because I'm a big. Zeppelin fan mm. and uh, song remains the same. You know that concert film was shot there, so I played mm. drums. So me <laughs> and the guys from uh, the goddamn Comedy Jam, mm-hmm. Josh Adam Myers and all those guys. Ben Bailey came down. My publicist played drums. We all just <laughs> in the <laughs> empty <laughs> arena just sat down and jammed on all these oh, that's... Guns and Roses and rock songs that we grew up with, and it was fun. It turned it into like sort of like uh, um, it felt like a uh, more like a like a you know our clubhouse for the day. Mm-hmm. Right. And, um, so clubhouse. yeah, you went in, you made a lot of noise and then it didn't just, it didn't seem as mm. crazy. Mm-hmm. So I went out there and, uh, Paul Verzi opened and then Joe DeRosa was on and Joe had this old sort of what I was calling a golden girl's sweater on. So I, w- I just made fun of that, you know, keep going, you know, for Paul Verzi and Joe DeRosa with his fucking golden girls <laughs> sweater. It just made me feel like I was at a comedy club, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And, then Do you I, get nervous then for, I, for shows like that still? You know, like, I mean, you've been doing uh, it for a long I get time. more like, I want people to feel like they got their money's worth. Like, mm-hmm. I want people to leave. Like, you feel like, uh, like nervousness and all that is, is on the way up. And then once you get to a certain level, then it becomes like responsibility. Right. Like, these yeah. people spent their hard earned money. Right, right, yeah. They're right. coming out. They had to get a sitter. Right. And it's not like they just went to a comedy club. Hey, let's watch 10 comics and maybe a couple, right. you Grab know. Grab some drinks. Yeah, have just a couple of drinks. Yeah, this is like, this is an event. Ooh, <laughs> so that's now, a lot of pressure, isn't it? Uh, no, I mean, I mean, it's it would be a lot of pressure if I had to do like math. <laughs> like something I, I wasn't good at, but yeah. it's like, this is what I do. They're yeah, coming yeah, to yeah. see me. Right. I mean, you could do a podcast there. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, you'd be fine. <laughs> well, I guess you're not in front of a crowd, but whatever. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? If yeah. you went to, the, to whatever Comic Con of right. podcasting, would you be nervous? Yes. All I'm right. Well, you're, right. Well, you're, you're, you're talking to a nervous I'm, guy. I'm, a ner- I'm so neurotic. I am nervous. I'm nervous right now. <laughs> okay. Very nervous. <laughs> I don't think that's going to help. How do, you, how do you, was there ever, <laughs> no, trust me, I'm, I'm on edge. Was there a you point, though? relaxed. Thank you. God, okay, keep it together. <laughs> Was there a point when you can't kind of, because certainly you felt nervousness sometime. Oh, no, yeah, the first was eight there... years of my career. I mean, I, <laughs> I would be like, I'd do a 10-minute spot, and then on nights when it was a difficult crowd in New York, I would be out of breath and sweating. Really? <laughs> 12 minutes. I was telling jokes, and I would be sweaty. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, no, 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 no. I had, all, I had all these rituals. I had this ritual for years where before I went on stage, I would untie and then retie my shoes because oh, I, I was worried what if they came untied and I did a face plant oh, oh my god um, I have shit that, uh, yeah. that, I have that kind of OCD shit it drives me crazy I don't know if that's OCD but well it depends on what your childhood was I mean if you had a childhood and you weren't bullied at all and mm. you still think like that I would think it was some sort of OCD <laughs> but you know you, need you got this shit kicked out of your yeah, sure. for a while so you, it's OCD you're kind of looking 
Oh, yours? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not going to diagnose you. I have no idea. Yeah. So in my case, it was probably just, you know, my childhood or whatever. It's just like, all right. Well, you got bullied as a kid? Yeah. Uh, really? Both. I, I did bully. I, you know, it was yeah. get it off of me and I'd pick on somebody yeah. weaker than me. You know, it was right. the Lord of the Flies yeah, generation of course. Sure. back then. Yeah. So it wasn't the way it is now where, um, you know, you can go on YouTube and the next thing you know, the bully's crying for some reason. Like, right. I never understood that. <laughs> Do you think, I feel like... <laughs> Bully's almost important in a way, isn't it? Like, you gotta allow kids to give each other shit, in a sense. I mean, you can't coddle uh, kids too much. I don't think as a parent you ever allow it. Sure. You know, it's it's something, though, but I mean, I know that there's, like, uh, like I have a daughter, and, and I want her to take some MMA. <laughs> and I, I just think all women should know that, because I feel like rapists... You know, depending on how well they're endowed, at some point they're going to have to get in close. And I feel like, if you know, <laughs> like just one jiu-jitsu, killer move. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like I would think, like when you watch those women fight in, in the UFC, it's just like there's, I mean, there's probably, I mean, I don't, I would, what, I don't, what percentage of the population of just guys that even know how to fight? Sure could beat them, and like I don't think they could because, yeah. and the second you get close to them, these are the professional level fighters, so. If um, the average woman would learn that, I mean, you could get them in a triangle, the arm, uh, arm bar. Right. I said the arm guard. I'm trying to remember all the stuff Rogan says. Like, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I'm not educated yeah. in it, but I just know looking at it that you just like learn a little self defense, just enough. Yeah. Well, the fact that yeah. you can be on your back and be in a powerful position, mm. and I just figure like a guy's going to try to gorilla his way in and mm. try to hold you down or whatever, and then all of a sudden he's, you know, he's tapping out. You blow out his elbow. Mm. And uh, I mean, that's an erection killer right there, man. You blow out the elbow. <laughs> As it, um, I think that's slang for the arm bar. I think it's called the erection blow killer. Blow out the old. Uh, <laughs> see, you're, that's part of, I feel like that's a new thing. You're already worried about your daughter being sexually assaulted. You know, how old is your daughter? I don't think that is. I think that's you You projecting your OCD on me. Mm. Mm. It's uh, I, oh, well, you're you, you're talking about, you know, you want your your two year old daughter to get Krav Maga so she can knife a dude's neck. Yeah, but I mean, that's like it's not like, you know, that didn't ex- it was not like, like sexual stult, assault started in 2014. I yeah. mean, like stuff like that is no, but what has always happened. And uh, and then also, you know, it gives you like confidence. And it really is all you got to do. You know, there was elementary, middle, and then high school. And, you know, I feel like somewhere in junior high, you just had to have one fight and mm-hmm. fight back. Mm-hmm. And then it was like prison. And everybody's like, ah, I don't, you know, he's going to be a problem. And then they mm-hmm. would just move on. And the, and the kids who never fought back, um, it's that they just have these horrible experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I just, you know, it's just one of those things, you know, as a well, parent. I guess what I meant is like now that you're a parent, mm-hmm. you're thinking about things differently. Possibly with kids and with your daughter. I mean, how has that changed the way I would you say I'm things? applying the things I always thought about okay. because I, I yeah. I've, because for all these years of not being a parent, I would watch parents, you know, dressing their kids in certain ways, and I would yeah. just be like, "How do you not see that that is that the shit that that kid's gonna get?" <laughs> yeah, right. You know what I mean? And it's just like, for the love of God, can you give him a fighting yeah, that chance? Poor son of a bitch, right? Yeah. So like, um, yeah, I, I, I. I think you, you, when you grow up, you become one. You either completely forget your childhood or you have a pretty vivid mm. memory of it. And I, you know, it's most, most of my childhood mm. is positive. That's an interesting observation. Yeah. yeah. Like there's nothing I feel like, like I, that's true. It. I feel like I forgot most of it. That means I probably had a decent one, right? Are the good no, ones the one you, you just, forget? No. No, because I, I had, I had a no. good mm. and a bad. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. What the, I'm not a psychologist, but yeah. I just think like the people I talk to, they either like remember everything right. or yeah. it's just like, dude, that was a long huh. time ago, man. That's I, interesting. I, I don't remember. So I think if you, you don't remember and then you have a kid, you know, I wouldn't want, I would rather be the kid of the parent that remembers. Right. <laughs> so, so yeah. Like, how do you forget? My mother said the funniest, uh, actually it was kind of heartbreaking. She, you know, my daughter's only a year and a half and she was going, uh, just re- really enjoy these first three, four years. Mm. Uh, yeah, she goes, really enjoy them before they go to school and the other kids ruin them. It's <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> <laughs> just like, I'm the kid. wow, mom. That's like one of the funniest and saddest things you ever said. But mm. um, then I was thinking, like, wow, did she think I was ruined? And I probably was on some level. <laughs> That's interesting that she remembered that after all these years. You, well, because you came home from school ruined. Yeah, but she's going to yeah. send your kids to school with, with people who have kids that they're not actively involved in their mm. life. Yeah, and so then the kids acting out, and they're, they, the kids on his way to becoming 
a problem and then your kid sees that behavior and starts to mimic it. Like, I, you know, a lot of my friends obviously have kids that are older and they just go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. it's just kids that are just, uh, you know, the key is not to get mad at the kid. You got to get mad at the parents. Definitely. So, like, if you ever want to punch the kid, you don't do that. Right. Don't punch you kids. You punch the parent. Punch the parent. I mean, That's I stay right. with dogs I, now. I'll give you a T-shirt. I just got that. <laughs> <That's> a, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean. I stay with dogs now because we have a dog and we go to a dog park a lot and things like that. And, like, it's always the owner. It's all about the owners. It's always not the about, owner. Not always, but sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. Well, but, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Because dogs, I feel like there's this pure sweet souls for the most part. And they have to be fucked up kind of by the owner. To be really or a dangerous animal. There's the dogs that nature says no to, but people say yes to because yeah. it's adorable. And then you, like the mother just, the, just inherently knows that there's something fucked up with the dog. <laughs> so it <laughs> kicks it away and the thing's going to starve to death. And that's too heartbreaking right. as a human being and a dog lover to watch. You so you give it the bottle and like, you know, then one <laughs> day you, you see you... it's got one red eye <laughs> and the other <laughs> one you got the Terminator. Well, are you talking about like an adopted dog or like a getting a puppy? Because I feel like when you adopt a dog, you definitely throw the dice a little bit, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a rescue dog, so mm-hmm. that, that was You my, had a pit bull, yeah, right? That was my experience, yeah. And we ended up uh, having to find her a new home, um, mm-hmm. and fortunately it worked out. But she was uh, human aggressive, as they say. God. I spent thousands of dollars, trainers, and all this type of thing. Wow. And, like, my trainer ended up taking her. And is, really? It has been, like, the challenge, I think, of his dog career. One of, Wait, one the, of, the <laughs> trainer adopted the dog? Yeah, took Incredible. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Has he Has he managed to tame... The animal now. He's been working with her for two years, and she, She's a for the project. first time in her life, has another dog friend. Ah. Um. But he was the one who said, you know, this is one of these dogs nature said no to, but people said yes. He goes, I'm, uh. I'm thinking that that's what it is. But she's an absolute, she's one of those people, like, if she was just abandoned again and mm-hmm. then came in here and then met the three of us, once she'd be all timid, and mm-hmm. once she saw that we were cool and we're gonna once you fed her and protected mm-hmm. her mm-hmm. she loved you she almost loved too hard right right so then and then she would treat everybody else who came <laughs> through that door enemy. yeah like they mm-hmm. they were an axe murderer <laughs> and we yeah. would just never i mean so i had all these things i used to um one of my buddies uh forest we used to just go on hikes and and it took forever and ever and ever and ever and ever but he was really good with animals and she ended up accepting him mm-hmm. and it was the longest you know and i had to do all like come back to the house and just just have them, you know, stop at the gate, and then it was a little bit behind the gate, and then up to the front door, <laughs> right. and then and then there was all the uh, him walking in first, and just every, any little thing could cause like a setback, and it was uh, it was, you know, it was emotionally draining. Yeah, yeah. that's a lot. Yeah, uh, I mean. And she, yeah, she ended up biting one of my friends. Oh, Whoa. You know? I always keep thinking of that moment when she raced at him. There was a oh, coffee no. table. I should have kicked it. Cause was, so she was on like a oh. the hardwood floor. I would have knocked her down, you know. She would have been was fine. He hurt? Was know? he hurt? No, she barely. Cause she hadn't done that before, so she didn't. But but how it works is at first they go to the feet, then they go higher, and mm. each time as they build up, and then Shit. it's bite, and then grab, and then, and it's just you know it's sort of like an escalating like alcoholic. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Um, I mean, I'm talking kind of you know I, I don't really know a lot of this stuff and there'll be a bunch of people right now saying actually well he just said it was all ignorant whatever i'm just talking about what my experience was i'm yeah. not saying i know everything about dogs so but that's that's kind of i was afraid to adopt because you just never know what you're gonna get and I, people give us shit because we bought we bought a dog we wanted a, we wanted a purebred puppy mm-hmm. or not a purebred but we really like the maltese and the yorkies we just we have a friend who had two maltese so and we really like them so we we're like so we kind of want the same Yorkie. dog you get a we falcon Got a falcon. That's the only thing Maltese I know. Oh, okay. it was oh. a Maltese. It's just a little fluffy white dog. Oh, it's a little toy dog. The Yorkie like is similar. Yeah, that you, that you can pet. <laughs> so. But we get so much shit for having bought a dog. But it's like it's, you know, you throw the dice when you you don't know what these dogs at the pound have been through. You know, it's like. Uh, I mean, and then what you, are you supposed to do? Just oh, what, what is supposed to happen the, to the puppy mill ones? These dogs need to be uh, bought. Somebody's yeah. got to take care of these dogs. I mean, you Christ need to sake. you need to know what you're doing when you get a rescue to train them right i mean i don't yeah <laughs> for me for me it's my first dog so i didn't want to gamble Take too much risk, and yeah, sure. but it's it's crazy it feels like you like when you're walking down the street with him people will be like oh where'd you get him and it's like, Are they like you didn't buy that dog you it's like uh if you care that much sorry this is something that bothers me <laughs> if you care that much about adopting dogs how can you have a kid 
you got to adopt kid, right? There's kids out there that need a home. How dare you have a kid yeah. of your own if you're not going to adopt first? Her Same vagina logic. is basically a puppy mill. Yeah, I'd agree with that. <laughs> Thank you. See, I got I got Bill's endorsement. My theory has been uh, no. If I if I was in your situation, I would just annoy the shit out of people. I would I'll volunteer it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got it at the Bottom. mall. Yeah, yeah. Pure bread. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it was like uh, the least sickly looking one. Yeah. I figured I'd get that one. Yeah. You know? I love that. Yeah. You just steer into it. <sighs> I love that. That's when I was over. In, yeah. I, I was over in France, and like I'm trying to learn how to speak French. I haven't yeah. been bad with it, but like when I go over there, you know, if you stink, they just start speaking English. And I was just like, well, if I got to listen mm-hmm. to English, you're listening to my French, right? And I would just torture them with it, and right. I would not switch over, <laughs> yeah. and they would be like, I speak English, and it's I like, love that. yeah, and I would be like, I, <laughs> I speak French, I speak French. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is the situation. <laughs> yeah, you want to listen? But to that's my order. the smart way to do it. Well, how that's else are you going to learn? learn? Yeah, no, how else am I going to learn? Because you know, I lived in Israel with Ela for five years. And mm-hmm. I succumbed because every time, you know, they're like, oh, this idiot American, I'm going to speak English to him. Mm-hmm. And I succumbed. I didn't steer in. I wish I steered in. Oh, dude, you, you got you to gotta get into the comedy of it, just yeah. torturing <laughs> them with their own language. It's really funny. <laughs> it made me look at immigrants differently. Like, uh, but I guess that immigrants, it's, it's worse because they're actually staying. You know what I mean? Right. So I would be like, I would be like, the fact ever. that I'm going to be there for 10 days, I'm not trying to get employed. Yeah. Man, I don't give a fuck. And I just have a good time. Right. Um, I know I, I, I had that. a great, <laughs> had a great time doing that. I need to get a shirt that says, I bought this dog. <laughs> yeah. So you probably never spent much time at a dog park because there's a whole thing there. But it sounds like your dog would have just gone on a rampage there, probably. Uh, she was all right initially, but then once she sort of bonded with us, then it became a problem. So, no, <laughs> we st- I stayed away from there. And then then everybody else who watches, like, the dog whisperer and that, and then they try to be the yeah. guy yeah. running shirtless up. Yeah, everybody <laughs> does that. They don't even know what it is. There's so many. See, if you would have... St- they if- do that. I did that for a while. Like, you thought <laughs> the magic was making yeah. that noise. <laughs> And uh, it's just like, no, this guy's been, <laughs> been working with also, God forever. does he even know anything? I also wonder, does he oh. just pretend like he knows and then we believe him? You know what I mean? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, you're, right, you're really... You're, you're I mean, he's doing this. I mean, how much... What does that do? Well, I, I think the guy knows what he's doing. Okay. All right. I mean, he got a TV yeah, show. Yeah. There's people... He, did, <laughs> but, he but, worked with a lot no. of famous people's dogs. No famous people got eaten by dogs. So I would right. say you know, on some level, There's he must have known. Yeah. yeah. You're a really cynical guy, man. I that, thought that, you that, were that down. Is, I thought you were going to be down. That is a lot for me to say that. I like, thought you like, were going to be down, but it's apparently me. I'm cynical even to Bill Burr. <laughs> Shit. But you're not, you know what? You're not as cynical as people think. Like, I listen to your podcast a lot, and you are, you're a very optimistic, fair guy. There's like a real fairness behind everything you say. It's nice to be listened to every once in a while. I mean, seriously. Everybody else just think, you know, he's the king of rage comedy. No. No. I think that's because, you know, I used to be a redhead, you know, before (laughs) he left me, but I still have the red beard. There's just something about, like, (laughs) you can sort of openly say that redheads are the children of Satan, and that's that's totally fine. That's all good. It's all good. (laughs) Kick a ginger day, all that fucking Does that bother you, though? Like, for real? All the the, No, it doesn't. It just, it's freeing. Because then I don't have to care about whatever you're crying about, you know, <laughs> and uh, particularly uh, white women complaining about how difficult it is to live in the United States of America. It's, right. it's hilarious. To me. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, look, if you're some hillbilly living on a dirt trail, then, yeah, OK, mm-hmm. I would feel bad for you. But like <laughs> other than that, you have a you have, you know, pretty Try much having red hair. No, no, it's, it's just more like, uh, no, that red hair thing is it's a myth, dude. I did great, dude. When I was single, I did great. I yeah. was, well, no, I was dude, confident. I, I, I was funny. Girls I, like I, 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 I did fine. It. But this yeah. whole fucking thing that I was like over, <laughs> over in the corner. Um, I mean, it sucked when I was growing up. Yeah, definitely. Because mm-hmm. it's like you got a bullseye on top of your head. <laughs> so, But I feel like, you know, I always joke with people. If I had like brown hair, I wouldn't even be in this fucking business. That's great. Mm-hmm. I don't think I, I mean, would be as true. funny. <laughs> yeah. And I think I would be, uh, I'd <laughs> yeah. probably be, you know, just doing some be a cog in a wheel somewhere. Yeah. Den- a dental, a dentist, possibly, as your yeah. father before you, right? You were yeah. a dental assistant? Yes. That's interesting. Well, I mean, it's not that interesting. It's interesting if my dad wasn't a dentist. But, right. You know, it's like, <laughs> right. You're did you ever have, Well, did you have ever plans, like, before you got into comedy? What, at what point did you decide you wanted to get into comedy when you were doing, like, dental assisting? Or was that just kind of, you always knew you wanted no, to do comedy? I needed a job. Yeah. I needed a job, and I got fired uh, from this warehouse <laughs> because, uh, there was this, f- this fat guy who was running. She was from the carpeted area, right? And he used to come out, 
you know, like the typical douche who like just gets a little bit of power and it just, I don't know what it, like, mm-hmm. and then they just, just go pure evil. I don't know what it, no, you didn't go pure evil, but he just, he just walked out there like he had accomplished something. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know what, like he had like a, an astronaut sort of gait the way he was <laughs> right. walking. So he used to come out there and everybody would see him coming and then try to like work. Oh, look at me cutting up the box. Mm-hmm. Or look at me, you know, doing this shit. And I just, sometimes I was like, fuck this guy. So I wouldn't do that. If anything, I would I would step off the gas a little bit. Like, hey, what's mm. up, man? Damn. How do yeah. you do that? Where do you get the, where do you, like. It was I self-sabotage because I, like I had no other wishes, option. I feel like everyone wishes they had that right there where you're like, you know what? Fuck this guy. I'm going to work less. I feel don't have that in me. That has but to I be, love that about but you. But that has to be applied correctly. Right. Because it'll <laughs> some, fuck your no, life up. Because at some point, it'll... you need to work as a team. <laughs> yeah. You know, like yeah. there's a plane crash, and maybe we should go this way. Yeah, fuck, fuck that those plane. I'm going over well, here. Well, no, it's not. Who's it's this cocksucker leading me out of the woods? But like, it's not fuck everyone. It's fuck these guys that don't deserve my respect. Well, yeah, so I, I didn't work as hard, and then I... And I was due for a raise, and then I asked for a raise, and then magically I got laid off. And <laughs> uh, yeah, and the economy was bad, and I couldn't get a job. And uh, I needed one, and my dad was like, well, why don't you come work with me for a little bit? And I did, and it, and it, was, it was great, because I, got, I, got, I worked with him for five years. And it was, oh, wow. And I got to uh, sort of, you know, by not seeing him a dad, just seeing him as a dentist, like mm. I kind of got to figure him out mm. um, and understand him more. So it was a great thing. And then also I, I learned so much about you know teeth and and all of the headaches that it can cause right and, uh yeah i can Are still you... i can i don't think i still take x-rays because they switched up the machinery so long <laughs> ago since when i did it but i could still take impressions pour them up i still know how to, the old school way where you tap on that vibrating thing to get all right. the bubbles out of it. there's nothing worse <laughs> than if there was a bubble because the bubble would oh they always seem to go down to the bottom you so gotta do another one it would always be right where the tooth was and then like the bubble huh. wouldn't take the imp- would huh. kill that impression uh that, that part of it and you'd have You're to talk about when you put like the clay in someone's mouth yeah and, and then you it. can't just re-pour it because <sighs> the 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 that gunk shrinks and then you have to redo it and then mm-hmm. if you had a gagger and you had to redo Dude, it i was oh. a fucking guy ga- i puked at the dentist when they took really? my mold yeah i was a gagger man it broke my heart if one of those bubbles popped in my mold yeah <laughs> no they, there was just like i used to just <laughs> whack what other kind of crazy shit you do as a you ever get in people's mouths or were you just on standby yeah i took out stitches and, <laughs> and i was certified to take x-rays and uh yeah i was about the extent of it so when did that end and, and did it end when you started doing comedy or no, I was doing, I was doing da- dates, right. uh, mm-hmm. and I was, and it was hilarious. My dad, you know, back then, he, I mean, he had, he worked from seven to seven. I never saw anybody. He had a seven a.m. patient. He used to work on like, like prisoners, people in the correctional thing, cops. Mm. He would work. On, yeah, he like he was like a force of nature. Mm. Like he did the work of three dentists. So I wanted to work with the other dentists. <laughs> Because it was just like I could actually get a lunch. We used to right. numb. We used to numb people up. I'd be numbing people up, and then race out while they were getting numb and just wolf down wow. a slice of pizza. Oh, my God. oh, you'd be on your feet the whole Incredible. day. It's just like no. I got my work ethic. Mm-hmm. Both my parents work extremely hard their whole lives. I mean, they're older now, so they're um, retired and stuff. But like, uh, but just watching how hard they worked, and I think that that is one of the main reasons why I got this gig coming up in New York mm. mm-hmm. was, um, you know, it was a combination of, of learning that's what working is and then coming up in the Boston comedy scene where, like, what was considered killing there, um, you know, or what was considered just getting the job done was killing in some of these other cities that mm. I went to, but, like, there, so it was just Training like... Training grounds. Yeah, no, they murdered. There was a guy, Kevin Knox, rest his soul, he used to host the show, and uh, Patrice, rest his soul, he used to say, uh, Kevin doesn't host the show as much as he just, like, takes breaks from killing. Mm. So he would, like, murder, and then you would, and it was, we used to compare it to, like, a giant wave. You'd get up there and just try to ride it, mm. and, and he really took it personally if you bombed. Oh. on his show because he felt like the crowd looked at him like kev you fucked us like who was that like he took it personally responsible like he was the gm mm. putting together a championship team so and we used to tell horror stories about having to follow what you have to follow his star trek bit or his drunk driving bit <laughs> and they were just all they all murdered mm. and um so yeah it was probably you know that whole thing so i have a very low level of patience 
for people that dog it mm. at their jobs. And I don't give a fuck if you hate your job. Just going in there and just not doing a good job. It's just mm-hmm. like, I, it's just like, then quit. Mm. Yeah. But like, don't make everybody else around you suffer. Like, it's, it's kind of like, it's bullshit. Like, you signed up to do this job. Do right. the fucking job. And, um, <clears throat> and I really don't have any sympathy for people who don't work hard and, uh, you know, and they're not getting where they want to be in life. Mm-hmm. If you're making an effort and you're still getting fucked, then that's like somebody I'll try to help out. But like, if you're mm-hmm. just like not putting in every minute, yeah, yeah, you're fucking over the person you're currently working for, and then asking like where your mm-hmm. yeah. brass ring is. It's like, well, I mean, mm. I, that's not how the world works. D- what what is this? You've probably heard this a lot that people say that dentists are like high rate of suicide. What is is there something to that? Have you heard that? Uh, yeah, I think everybody heard that growing up, but I never knew it's one. So that, no, maybe it's never not knew, even true. I've never known one that killed himself. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> did you? Fu- well, it sounds like it was stressful, but not s- suicidal. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah, he never killed himself. Yeah, he's he, <laughs> if That's what you're asking. Nobody killed himself. Yeah. <laughs> Is yeah. this the Oprah part where you're going to try to get me to cry? <laughs> yeah. Well, I got nothing. He to work thought with. about it one night. <laughs> if, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just thought that was an interesting thing. It's just one of those things you hear and you're just like, accept it on face value. You're like, oh yeah, dentists just all, they're all killing themselves. Yeah, there was all of those things. And there was the, thing, the guy who put the pack of firecrackers in the kid's back pocket and lit it and blew half his ass off. Mm. You never heard that one? These might be older ones before your guy's time. Mm. But there was a, there was these thing, candies called Pop Rocks. Mm. And, oh yeah, I know the Pop yeah, Rocks. So yeah. the thing was somebody swallowed the whole bag and his stomach exploded and he died. <laughs> yeah. Like all of those types right. of things existed. So I don't know what the new ones are. <laughs> right. He was on his iPad and he fell asleep yeah. and he burned his face. I'm <laughs> sure. trying to update the technology. Yeah. That's a good one. I think that's true actually. I heard that. <laughs> Um, so let's take a quick break. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. We got a lot to get to. Am I coming back after the break? You are coming back. <laughs> All right. I, okay, hope I, so. it. Yeah, I, I hope it. so. Uh, guys, are you coming back after the break? I certainly <laughs> hope so as well. Stay tuned. Thank you to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this episode. Now, have you guys seen Pulp Fiction? You know the scene at the end of that movie where he opens the briefcase and it's glowing gold and you don't know what's in it? Well, I finally do know what's in it. Because Dollar Shave Club, look at this, you see the aura coming off it? <laughs> look at these packs of One Wipe Charlies. Oh my god. First of all, this has nothing to do with the copyright. I just wanted to give them a shout out. Oh man, I can't wait for that smell to be replaced with the putrid scent of my rotting asshole. But enough about that. Let's get, thank you to Dollar Shave Club. Because you guys already know what's up. You gotta look and feel and smell and have your asshole smelling the very best. They got it all, boys. They got toothbrushes, toothpaste, and, of course, razors and shaving butter. (laughs) That's how I get ready. you got to get ready with Dollar Shave Club because they've got the best products. You don't have to go to the freaking store. It's the most affordable. Guys, I don't know what we're missing. We're all guys, right? No. Oh, oh, there's girls, too. Guess what? They also need to shave. Yeah. And brush their teeth. Yeah. So what are we all doing? They've got the answers right here. Dollar Shave Club. Okay. And right now, you can get ready with an amazing deal on any one of their starter sets. I recommend the Daily Essential Starter Set because I love the Amber Dirt Lavender Body Cleanser. Why do they make me say that? <laughs> like, I love all their products. <laughs> uh, you don't, why do you specifically are they, well, a- anyway, that one is amazing. Their marketing team I just like, find it. Let's call out something specific. Yeah. The lavender, come on, guys. I just thought, this is the one. It's the one wipe, Charlie, all right? <laughs> but you can't go wrong with any of them, and that I do agree with. Head on over to dollarshaveclub.com slash h3 to pick up your own Dollar Shave Club starter set for just, how much? Five freaking dollars on the table, okay? Give me a break. After your starter set, product ship at regular price, and make sure you check out their new video, too. That's Dollar Shave Club. I don't know what that video is. <laughs> Could be something really obscene. I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> That's dollarshaveclub.com slash H3. Dollarshaveclub.com slash H3, guys. They got the best razors. They got the best shit. They got everything you freaking need. Five dollars on the table. Try it. Dollar Shave Club. Thank you to Mint Mobile for sponsoring us. I love this product because phone lines are so effing expensive. It's ridiculous. I remember when we lived in Israel and when we were dead broke... There was phone companies that were selling their product for like $10 a month. And it Mm -hmm. saved our life. Like it's actually saved our life. We were so broke. 
And here, if you want to get a plan, it's like a hundred freaking dollars. It's yeah. insane. So that's why I'm so happy to see Mint Mobile because they are that disruptor that's given a good service at a fair price. Okay. Now I want to read this copy they've got because it's hilarious. They're sending shots out to the world. <laughs> the big and big wireless pr- stands for a lot of things: big contracts, big bills, and big fees. Oh, <laughs> what's up now? <laughs> Shots fired, like AT&T's new $800 million administrative fee increased. <laughs> <laughs> Mint Mobile doesn't F around with any of that shit, because guess what? They cost just $15 a month. Wow. That's a game changer, dude. They make it so easy to cut your wireless bill down. All they do is send you this card in the mail. And guess what? You know what that is. It's a SIM card. You plug it in your phone, Bob's your uncle. $15 a month. I'm telling you, it's it's it changed my life when I had this opportunity in Israel. Choose between two, five, ten gigabyte 4G LTE plans. No more paying for unlimited data that you don't even need. Every plan comes with unlimited talk and text and if you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven day money back guarantee. (laughs) Did you ditch your old wireless bill and start saving with Mint Mobile yet? It's about time, guys. Go right now. Set up your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month plus free shipping on your Mint Mobile SIM card. Go to mintmobile.com slash h3. That is mintmobile.com slash h3. Cut your wireless bill to $15 a month and get free shipping on your SIM card, guys. Mintmobile.com slash h3. Guys, they are listening and they are watching. And this is not me being paranoid. They're out there lurking, ready to steal your data right Who's now. Who's they? Who is they? <laughs> If you need to know who's they, they are already ahead of you. Okay? <laughs> they, the government, the ISP, the people sitting at the airport being like, oh, free airport internet. Cool, time to steal your passport, your credit card. They, Ela, are all <laughs> out there and they're preying on the weak lambs of the world. That's why you need to get Express VPN. <laughs> You're making online purchases or accessing your email on an unsecured network or even from home because the ISPs can see everything. You're making a big mistake, okay? You are being tracked. ExpressVPN has easy-to-use app that runs seamlessly in the background of any computer, phone, or tablet. You turn on ExpressVPN protection. It takes one click. Boom. Protected. See you later, haters. <laughs> I was going to flip off the camera, but I thought maybe that's too obscene. <laughs> um... ExpressVPN secures and anonymizes your internet browsing history, everything that's going on, encrypts your data, hides your public IP address. You are set to go, okay? Forget about hentai, okay? We can live with hentai. The government doesn't care if you're watching hentai or whatever is even weirder than that. What I do care is that people don't get my credit card information. Don't get my passport, okay? This is the kind of things that are important to keep secure, I don't want to be another stat in Facebook's <laughs> advertising gambit or Russian propaganda machine, okay? Protect your online activity today and find out how you can get three months free at expressvpn.com slash h3. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N. <laughs> E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash h3 for Three months free with a one-year package. Visit expressvpn.com slash h3 to learn more. Thank you. We are back with the great, great, greatest Bill Burr. Oh, Jesus. I do mean that, by the way. Uh, I know it makes you uncomfortable. It but, does. Yeah. <laughs> One great was bad enough. <laughs> does it? But, but you know that. Like, I like being appreciated. Yeah, okay. Just say, tone it back down. with the person I, I appreciate. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Back with He's the person. He's worth the money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Definitely worth the money, guys. <laughs> Madison Square Garden. Yes. What was that? Uh, November 7th in New York City. That's guys. right. Head on over to billbird.com slash events. And I do want to say, guys, you all have Netflix. I mean, everyone has Netflix. Statistically, half of Americans, maybe even more, have Netflix. That's incredible, right? That means that everybody should be watching F is for family. F is for family right I would say now. even more people have it, considering how easy it is to, to steal somebody's <laughs> right. password. Right. Mm. <laughs> So I would say, Isn't that incredible that they don't care about that? That blows my mind. I mean, like, I think that's like this this genius lead, lead loss, like 
It's, yeah, but then we'll get them addicted to it. But they, and they someday, have, oh, someday that relationship's going <laughs> to fail, and they're only going to be halfway through Narcos, and they're going to have to see the ending. And then that's Absolutely. when we're going to get their account. But that, but like they were so ahead of the game because all these companies with passwords with access, they're so tight ass about it. They'd be like, "Oh, you can only log in two computers at once." Netflix, going back a decade, said, "No, everyone on the block, everybody you know, can use your account." Yep. And look at them now. Who's fucking laughing now? I guess they are. F is for family, guys. Who's Check it out. Who's laughing now? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I want to show you some videos. Okay. I thought I would lighten. I don't know if you're going to like this one. This one, I don't know say if it was risky, but... Risque. I don't know. We'll see what you think. This is an old classic. You may have seen it. You don't have to say anything. I just want you to enjoy it. <laughs> is that a move? <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is us. Check us out. That was incredible. You want to see that again? <laughs> that was like breakdancing right there. <laughs> no, that's a move. That's not a that move. That is absolutely a move. I think his face got kind of, probably kind of roughed up from I that I think that, that's absolutely a move. <laughs> it's the face grind. Watch him. Watch how controlled he is. <laughs> I don't that's know, That's pretty man. crazy. No, dude. You the think second, they were no, that? The, the second you're sliding on your face, you don't want to be, your arms are going to flail. <laughs> right. He was just right. like... Well, they have a different center of balance. It's like a nice like hockey stop. Like, shh. <laughs> if it's a move, then that's a Wait, new... watch this. Watch his arms. Watch his arms. <laughs> he, he was pushing, too, to try to get another I mean, they're, extra foot. That, they're ahead of the game. That guy's a genius. I want to see more of those moves. Well, I've never thought about it as it being a move. Yeah. But once again, the that great, kinda... that's, that's, great mind that's his, that I appreciate very that's, much. That's his finishing move. <laughs> Damn, the old the face, face slide. slide. So here, I want to ask you. How nuts did the crowd go when he did that? I mean, that's it's probably still... how he got the, like, the gig. What are you going to do? <laughs> right. I got plenty of little people. All right, what are you going to do with that? You yeah. All right, I got what you're finishing. Uh, I got the, the face slide. Yeah, the face grind. The face, yeah, whatever you want to call it. More of a yeah. grind. The deli face. Mm. <laughs> the, yeah, exactly. So I want to ask you about uh, one of the great moments in your career, or one of my favorite moments in your career that I, I've always appreciated. <laughs> I'm going to pop this up for Double reference the for the audience. I want to ask you about Sherry's berries. berries. Let me catch everyone up. And a sweet holiday gift. So you had a, I'm just going to catch you up. You had a advertiser called Sherry's Berries. Yeah. And while you were reading the copy, you just, you couldn't hold it together. Because it, was it was my first time reading the copy. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just so <laughs> homophobic and homoerotic at the same time right. that I just, it, it was, just, it was so silly. I couldn't believe it was actual copy. And it's just so ridiculous. The premise, like I've never heard anything like that being yeah. advertised. Evidently they're delicious. <laughs> still, still making it Chocolate covered, chocolate still covered. Still making for it. Yeah, and they dropped me after a while. <laughs> you know what happened was I had Harris Stanton was on, and they was like, "We have strawberries, you know, dripped, you know, dunked in white chocolate, and then they, we have, you know, and dark chocolate." It's like, wait, and I've just jokingly said to him, "He's black." I said, "How come the white chocolate comes before this?" And, then, <laughs> and we started riffing on the Klan or something. And then I don't know don't how I that. don't know. Then it was just oh, people are gonna think that our strawberries are made by the Klan. I didn't know what they were saying. Right. Yeah. I'm still sad they left. I I mm. loved, how yeah, many, I loved uh, going Sherry yeah. Berries. I mean, dude, how many ads go viral? I've been thinking about. I've never bought Sherry's Berries. Well, they told me to but, take this down. Really? And oh, then, this on and your, then, because in the end, I said, "You guys better buy this shit because I'm going to get in trouble." Yeah. And then people mm. bought it, and then they quickly were smart enough to be like, "Okay, leave it up, leave it up." <laughs> and then we had this really cool thing where I felt like. Cherry's berries. They get me. It's we. we and I don't know what happened. I think it. somebody new came in, or maybe somebody. Uh, Saw so Black Klansman, mm. the the original cut of it, right? You know, before it came out. Now, <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> I don't uh, know what happened. What do you love? Or maybe I'm I was gonna one. say we listened to it so many times. It's like one of our. Well, oh, thank you. I love it. <laughs> so let me let me update the the audience here with a little Sherry yeah. Berries. Also have delicious products such as Christmas cake pops, cheesecakes, and dipped pretzels. Here's the only way to get. This special 1999 Sherry's Berries <laughs> offer. <laughs> Call 866 Fruit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what the fuck am I selling? <laughs> Did I approve this? This is fucking ridiculous. Who the fuck is going to buy this shit? This is the funniest shit I've ever seen in my fucking life. <laughs> So there Christmas you go, just a little, 1-800-FRUIT. 
<laughs> yeah. I love that so much. <laughs> yeah. So did they, I, I, I really just wanted to know how did they react to that, but it sounds like At first negative, they, really. they reacted like you know how they were like, no, you can't be like <laughs> laughing, saying he's going to buy so me, good. take it down. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> well, I have this thing on my part, I never talk to the advertisers. Mm. I am mm-hmm. never available. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if like, yeah, you either get what I do or you don't. And I understand. I understand if you don't want to be associated with sure. my stupidity. <laughs> But if you do, I think I can help you sell some stuff. Like some the thing, the, yeah. well, the thing is, is is people can fast forward through the ads, so the show can't stop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you got You got to do something. To right. Make it you have to make it walk. Yeah. <laughs> I like on Howard Stern. I love when he burps during the read. <laughs> right. It yeah. just it always makes me laugh, and it always sounds like the same one. Like Fred's <laughs> doing it, but like mm. I, uh, it always makes me laugh whenever. He, <laughs> it's just something hilarious. About somebody burping while reading advertising, so I actually look forward. I look forward to his reads. I look forward to your reads. I yeah. love listening to your reads because. Well, let let me ask you this: Do do you get in trouble a lot when you do reads? Because a lot of your reads are very, like I was listening to your one of your recent podcasts. You were talking about sports betting. You're like, I don't. You're like. I don't fucking sports bet. Because they make you say, like, I oh, love yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. The greatest yeah. things I've love... ever done is sports. Like, I don't, I don't do this shit. Yeah. They they're put like, words in your mouth. Yeah, and they'd be like, you bet, I... you win. I'm like, yeah, or you lose, <laughs> yeah. and your wife leaves you. I mean, yeah. there's, there's degrees right. to this thing. Yeah. So... But do sponsors get upset no. with your candidness? <laughs> no, I think at this point, like, it's kind of been established. This is what he does. It's the yeah. good stuff. Yeah, so they'll just be, like, they, like, I haven't lost an avatar. I shouldn't say this, but I haven't lost one in, um about three months four months mm. yeah so that's been a it's good a run and that's good that's a good run mm. it's a good run there's always like <laughs> my favorite one i wish i could have the hall of fame of the one and dones <laughs> i'm trying to think who they were the only one i could ever remember is uh nature box and i oh, thought yeah. i thought oh, i know th- what happened i thought it was about? nature's box like possessive <laughs> so i was like you're going down on mother nature right yeah <laughs> which yeah. is so stupid <laughs> yeah but as you're laughing, I read another three lines of copy, and you're getting information, and they just didn't see... They didn't find the humor in it. That's so lame. We had Nature Box. I think they went under, actually. Yeah. Well, it was stupid. They're just, well, like, bringing... We weren't... We failed them. They're bringing you a banana, and it's just like, well, I mean, I could fucking... You can't do this yourself? Like, yeah. what they were offering was, was just, snacks. like... snacks. Yeah, it was snacks, yeah. yeah, yeah. Was like, snacks, but... <laughs> Snack. You take an extra forty five seconds out of your day, you can yeah. probably do this yourself. Yeah. <laughs> do you ever get asked for make goods when you do ads? What do you mean? Like if I screwed they it up? They say they say you gotta do another one for free because you messed up the the first one. I don't recall anybody ever talking to me in that tone. <laughs> they don't fucking update. <laughs> yeah. You guys you gotta do another one. <laughs> and you gotta because, do it for free. <laughs> because uh no one's you're got lucky the you're still living. <laughs> yeah. you fucking punk. That's what right? it is. Yeah, no. So let me tell you. Someone, we get this shit all the time. I don't get this. I don't get that respect. You don't get what? I don't get that respect. People ask me for well, me. You gotta get to the Here, level. Listen to oh, this. no. You'll, you'll get. No, I know. There was. There, no, there's been shit that I've screwed up. Um, but I said there's a buffer between me and them. Yeah. So. I love that. So yeah. Andrew, who runs, will be like, yeah, listen, these guys, they were a little upset about it. Just, just fucking read it again. It's like, all right, cool. I'll read it again. So I, but I don't get the whole whatever sit down, mafia mm. sit down that you right. get. So you did get him read it again. I don't know. You don't even know. Oh, ignorance yeah. is bliss. Yeah. Not to call you ignorant. No, but, you know. I am ignorant. But you don't. Um, but I'm smart enough to know that you don't talk to your advertisers ever. It's like I didn't yeah. get into podcasting right. to, to, to do a, a fucking uh, a conference call. <sighs> With you fucking guys talking about the shirt you're trying to sell. Like, well, I get it. It's a shirt. Yeah. You wrote yeah. what you're going to say. Just like, I, I don't want to listen to you guys. Like, you're just trying to fill up your day. Mm-hmm. So many people in, in those fucking corporations, they're just trying to justify their desk. Yes. Mm-hmm. So then mm. the, 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 Preach. the whole, I hate when the conference call ends and then you hear this voice that you haven't heard the whole call. <laughs> and it's like, you were afraid. That everyone was going to hang up and you didn't say anything. Yes. So now oh you, you're God. in a panic mode. So then they just throw something out there and you have to address it like it's a legitimate comment when, when it isn't. It's just like, you know. Yeah, Do you like, go through a lot like, of those? Because you you went from being working kind of day jobs to doing comedy full time, I, I presume. I barely you, do them anymore. But I used to. I've heard one story many times. What I used to do when I had conference calls on scripts or anything, what I would do, would I would put the phone on speaker and I would throw it to the other side of the bed. And then I would listen because you get video. I would literally lay on the bed like with my arm across my eyes. And I would just wait for people to stop talking. And then I'd just be like, yeah, you know, it sounds good. Yeah. Right. So I don't know why I 
can watch so many hours of sports, yet I can't even, I can't even like, I can't handle more than, it, it, they drive me right. insane. Um, well, I, I like texting. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, almost. Yeah. You don't. You, phone, calling someone on the phone is almost like an insane thing to do these it's days. It's like rude. It's like, dude, what? Unless you have Text like a sort of sort of intimate relationship, right? You know mm-hmm. I mean, Ela, yeah. if I call Ela, it's it's, it's important. Like, what happened? If I call <laughs> Ela, the, if I call if I call Ela to chit chat, what did you do? That'd be you weird. In jail. If Ela called me and was like, "Hey, how you doing?" I'd be like, "Okay, what? What is it?" You know yeah. what I mean? Like what? I feel like since we we had the kid, my wife finds me calling her. <laughs> uh, Checking in. No, it, it, it's annoying because she either is in the middle of a shit storm or she finally got a break. And then my <laughs> dumb ass is going to be like, oh, you, you see this guy who's at the supermarket. And she's just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I just feel, I just want to <laughs> close alone. my eyes. I got yeah. 10 minutes yeah. to sleep. <laughs> yeah, so she's a uh, trooper. <laughs> me. Oh, I wanted to tell you about this make good we got. And I think I need to remove myself because this actually drove me crazy. It was funny, though. They <laughs> said, I said when I was doing a copy read. Get your free trial for five dollars, but what was written was four ninety five, and they said you have to do it again for free, because you said five dollars instead of four ninety five. You should have just said, "Well, I'm not doing that." We did. We did. And That's what, they what we said. said. They said, "Okay, exactly." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's poker. But, yeah, they're bluffing. They're holding nothing. Yeah, you have to do it again for free. <laughs> no, I don't. But no, it is totally a game of being. It's like, that, but it's better because yeah. you went higher. <laughs> so then, oh my God! I just yeah. saved a nickel. Yeah. I love this podcast. Exactly, it's a twist. <laughs> yeah, now if you said like you know four fifty, and then they find out it's four ninety five, then they have a forty five cent. Now we got shit a, now we got a problem on our hands. <laughs> okay, yeah, now you have a conference call. <laughs> now we got a everybody's going to yeah. chime in on yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. How do you, I, as a fan of your podcast, the Monday Morning Podcast? Everybody who is not listening mm-hmm. to the Monday Morning Podcast, please do because it is my favorite. How do you prepare for that podcast? Because you sit down, you talk, and I swear to God, it's like you're doing material, but yeah, I know you're just talking, but like, I, I always wonder, how do you prepare? Do you prepare at all for your podcast? I, uh, Andrew sends me the advertising. Yeah. I copy and your paste producer. it. your producer. Yep. I copy and paste it. And then he sends me the questions for the week. I copy and paste that and I stick it under the ads. Mm-hmm. I never broken down my whole game thing. My game film. And then what I do is I'll just write Pat's game, you know. Topics. Big feet, blah, 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 whatever. And then I just start talking. (laughs) And uh, if it's not going well, I go to the list. Mm. If it goes great, I barely look at the list. Mm. And all of a sudden I look down and I've done like a half hour and I haven't even done the read yet. I know that the questions are going to take like uh, 20 minutes or so. And, um, yeah, that's basically how I do it. Now, but through when you're going throughout the week in between podcasts, do you take notes of shit you want to talk about? Or do you sit down and you're like, oh, I remember that. I want to talk about that. No. like, How I, do you but, decide on topics? No, as I just sit down and I just. What? And I'm just like, oh, fuck, what happened to me in the last couple of days? <laughs> I know something happened like to me. Like you told <laughs> an anecdote about, like, uh, you were making a sandwich and the lady was, she asked for a special thing and the lady was just like, no. Oh my god! <laughs> but which was so funny. But I don't I think I would it. remember I that, that guy. Because you know what I hated about the guy was he was he was on like his tiptoes watching. Yeah. I ordered a bagel. And I feel like I can visualize it. Yeah, too. and he wanted butter on him. And and you know it's, it's a fucking airport. <laughs> yeah. And and they got like the little the little you know little conveyor belt thing, and they sent it through. And he he was just sitting there like like a f- meerkat, right? And and he was just annoying me. Mm-hmm. Because I've had that job. Mm. It's just like we just mm. met him, make the thing, and be done with it. And he just say, "Oh, oh could, could you could you just put could you just put the butter on it? I would just, you put the butter on it." And she, and she was just like she was like a a, a grizzled vet. She was just like, "What? <laughs> like, can you just? I just wanted can you can you put the, the the butter on it now? You know, before I go up to register." She goes, oh, the, "The butter's over there." And he goes, "No, no. I was just hoping. Can, can you spread it now? So like, because it's still warm, I want it to be melted. Can, can you do that?" And she just goes. No. I love that. It's so good. <laughs> it's fucking... But it's so and good. And I, I laugh, and I looked at her, and she just looked at me, gave me like half a smile. She had a cigarette hanging out of her mouth. Like, what do you want? I was like, ham and cheese. But I guess that, that <laughs> memory that. was... You, you, you have a good memory, I think, because I don't think I would have held on to even, even something that precious. But you've always got... I mean, you do it twice a week, too, so it's a lot of time to fill. But you, you somehow capture these memories and retell it in a way... To, you know, my, you gotta, you my favorite talent. clip, my favorite clip on yeah. my podcast is because I'm making 
my wife laugh, which is my favorite thing uh-huh, in the world. Uh-huh. She has the greatest laugh. That's cute as hell, by the way. And thank you. I can be adorable. That is cute as hell. You know, as much as you <laughs> like my podcast, I can be adorable every once in a while. Um, I told her this story of, uh, I first told the story of watching this old guy wipe out on a scooter, sliding on his face. And then it reminded me of this time I saw this guy, um, this guy in Griffith Park mm. was in street clothes and went down the steepest hill. And wiped out. And I was telling the story. It was like a Sherry's Berry thing that it started <laughs> making me laugh. And then my wife started laughing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> you know, that story, that, li- listening, her, her laughing, that's why we got married. That, that whole story, right? The chemistry <laughs> and that whole thing. Like, I, yeah. I listen, you know, I, listen, I go back and I listen to that like once a year. <laughs> and, uh, no, I feel lucky that I that's... met somebody that has, like... She's as funny as most comedians I know, mm. and she has an incredible sense of humor. And um, it's kind of, uh, it was, yeah, it was just something that, I, you know, someone like me being a, a lunatic, I needed <laughs> someone like that that could laugh that hard at somebody falling off a skateboard. Mm. <laughs> How did you guys meet, by the way, you and your wife? Um, well, she's in the business. She worked on um, Chappelle's show, but mm. she did. I was on season two. She was on was season. She an actor season or one. no? She was. Uh, um, what was she on that? I forget what she was on that one. But on on Tough Crowds, when I met her, she was a talent coordinator. Mm. But she also was an actor. She's been an actor than I am. Mm. Every bit is funny. So she's like one of those people that is so good at everything. Mm. It's trying to figure out you know what which direction to go in. Mm. Where I am a one trick pony. Uh, well, that's not true. Uh, if you really look at it, it is. If you look closely. Yeah, if you look at the credits, <laughs> yeah. like, wow, this guy's all over the place. And you're like, hey, he kind of does true. this. You got a TV show, He's doing you're in the, the movie. same fucking Give thing. Give me a break. <laughs> Give me a break. Yeah, and I play Frank Murphy, who's a loud screaming jackass. I do stand up, <laughs> wow. loud screaming jackass. I do my podcast. Loud what about in the movie? Jackass. Doesn't look like a loud Me screaming jackass. Me driving over here, loud screaming <laughs> right. jackass. Yeah. You're playing it's the part. A, yes, it's a it's ACDC. Yeah, ACDC. Same you know fucking what you're good at. Okay. three chords. But seriously, the movie does seem to not, to be a departure from the loud screaming jackass. Which movie? The one that's yeah. coming out in oh, November. Oh yeah, the front runner. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. look. I saw from the trailers, not that much information, but you seem to be playing a very s- sincere detective. Do I, do I understand no. that role? <laughs> I, I, pl- I'm playing a reporter. Oh, you're a reporter. Oh. Okay, so uh, you're who works for the Miami one of the good Herald, guys. who mysteriously still possesses my Boston accent. <laughs> and meanwhile, yeah. Hugh Grant, who I think is going to get nominated for an Oscar, like in between takes, is speaking like us. Uh, he's Australian. That's what he <laughs> talks like. And then and action. And then he's, he's fucking Gary Hart. That blows. I, I find that amazing. Yeah. I probably shouldn't. It's because but he's it an actor, amazing. as opposed yeah. to me, who just memorizes lines and tries well, to make it sound believable. Well, I can't wait. To, that movie looks really good. It really. It, when it I is, saw the trailer, I was is, like, Damn. Uh, It's amazing. And I have to start learning everybody else's name in it, because I, um, I, I was only on it for, uh, and with a limited amount of actors, because everybody just crushes it. It's a bunch of, you know, mm-hmm. to me, they're kids. I'm 50, so they're all mm-hmm. in their 20s and 30s. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, you know, I was kind of watching, going like, here's the next batch. Like, mm-hmm. these these. Mm-hmm. these men and women are going to be uh, be doing stuff. So I'm very happy for uh, all of those people. Are you, it's hard to tell from the trailer, but is it a major role in the film or is it more of a like kind of secondary character? Uh, more like a 14th. Okay, okay, character. okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to act in more movies? You seem uh, to enjoy it. I love I know, you I Breaking do. No, Bad. I, 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 I really, I, it's, it's weird now that I have a kid, but I learned on that one that the next time I'm just going to rent a place and bring my wife and kid mm. with me. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Uh, too much away. That was yeah. That was hard. Oh my god, my my kid today was coolest thing ever. Like she occasionally now speaks and will do two words. You know, if she's not shy or anything mm-hmm. like that. So she had to get one of her shots today, and she's been over there a bunch of times. So she knew. So she would go to the doctors, and she was like, you know, <laughs> getting all nervous, like like a dog <laughs> going to the vet. Mm-hmm. So you know, they're gonna sh- shoot into her little cute little thigh, and <laughs> like she's sitting there and. Uh, she's like, oh, 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 and she shot her and, and, you know, gave her the shot and she starts crying and she goes, okay, it's over. And she, when she say, yeah, she looked at the nurse. She goes, oh, done. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> and I was oh just gosh. like, oh, it like broke my heart. <laughs> and I was funny. proud that she said three words and she totally communicated like, right. That's so cute. Yeah. Oh, it seems like you're in love with your daughter hearing you talk about her on the podcast. Jesus yep. Christ. Well, you're pretty perceptive. You take a care <laughs> well, about your own I, child. Listen, more than that, okay? Because again, you, you're this character. You uh, gush. You gush over your daughter. Not everyone gushes. Did your dad gush over you? Uh, I mean, I was too little. Yeah, no, my dad was, my dad actually at work did. 
at work. That's when I learned, like, oh, he my got... God, yeah, he really likes us. <laughs> but when he came home, yeah, he was That's cracking funny. the whip. <laughs> hmm. your bed, mate? You do your studies? Hmm. Well, why not? You know, <laughs> it was that shit. Hmm. And uh, he also had a zillion kids, so, I mean, yeah. Really? How many siblings many? do you have? I don't know, dude. The internet's too fucking weird to give out all that information. Oh, you don't uh, even want to say really? how many because you're afraid that it will yeah, compromise all means, your privacy. Yeah, by keep talking about it. Is there anybody you can cut this out? <laughs> I'm honest, dude. Like, Seriously? Yeah, no, oh. dude. I, yeah, there's fucking lunatics out there. Okay. Well, Off the air. Off the air, I'll tell you. <laughs> all right. Jeez. <laughs> I love how surprised he is. Jeez, well, you actually, can mention the amount. Absolutely, absolutely <laughs> crazy people. Well, okay, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not. Surprised. What I got to do, what you have to do, is just consistently lie and change names. <laughs> okay. I actually, I do have friends that do that. I don't that think I'm smart it. enough to do that. Yeah. But I have friends who are YouTubers. That, approach, yeah. that their front-facing persona that everyone knows them by their name and everything is a complete fabrication. Yeah. And they're brilliant. I wish I thought about that. <laughs> because the, we've had creepy people coming to our because house. they're probably the, the same assholes that created a lot of this spyware shit. Like, if you already think of that, or they just had a, or they are smart, you know? <laughs> but yeah, if I could, well, I could never do it all over again because of what I do, I need social media. But if I wasn't, um, you know, a performer, if I was a manager or anything like that, I would have a website, but I would not be on social media at all. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Whew. All right. I don't know why that got so <laughs> flat uh, on my part. Tell me about uh, all things comedy. I don't know. You say I'm nervous. I'm sweating here. I'm just going to let you sit. God, yeah, I point. know you are. You don't have you to got, save you, me. You got to push through to the other side. It's no, I great. know, but you don't, you <laughs> don't have great. to save okay. me. You're all sweaty. You're touching. Like. Dude, if you were a you're reliever right, right okay? now, if you were a reliever on the other team, I'd have to come out and check you for Vaseline or something. You touched your hair and your brill a little too many times. He's doctoring the ball. <laughs> All right, regroup. Here where we are. Where were we? Where <laughs> um, we? Jackie Gleason. I, I have a it. question about your okay. <clears throat> you being a dad and having a kid. We have been trying to have a kid. Mm -hmm. And the longer it takes, we also kind of second question the whole thing. Like, should, should we? we have a yeah. kid? It's awesome. It's yeah. one of the few things that li truly lives up to the hype. Mm -hmm. Really? All these years of being lied to about these summertime movies. <laughs> <laughs> the kid thing is, it's awesome. And, uh... You know, what do I know? I'm only a year and a half in. So <clears throat> my year and a half experience has been incredible. And the only advice I would give you is don't listen to 90% of other parents. Mm. Because for some reason, they take a joy out of trying to ruin the experience. <laughs> saying, like, oh, you wait. This is your first one? Oh, everything's going to change. Mm. No more drinking. Oh, my God. Get sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they, just, it's just, they just hit you with all this dread. And I was, I was just yeah. looking at him like, you sound like a terrible father. <laughs> like, you don't sound like you're enjoying it. <laughs> and that really, no, no, no. I love it. And they start thinking, well, why didn't you say all that positive stuff, you cunt? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just how... Uh, <laughs> People just like to complain, I and guess. And they like knowing shit. Yeah, and exactly. Trying to, trying to, like, uh... Pass on the knowledge. Yeah, it's just like... But in an annoying way. Yeah, no, like, Bill uh, Burr, the optimist, I'm telling you. Yeah, <laughs> no, I got I, a lot uh, of sweetness in you. Hmm. Yeah, no. I, I, yeah, I am, I am not what people think. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you about All Things Comedy. You've got... what? What is All Things Comedy? Is it a production uh, company? Is it a podcasting network? I mean, this is a company... Yeah, it's, that, it's everything. It's yeah, everything. It's everything. It's everything. It's first it started off, we, uh, you know, years ago, we were watching the whole podcast thing exploding, mm -hmm. and then watching what always happens. Like, the artists create a scene, mm -hmm. and then the businessman comes in and is like, okay, here's the deal. I'm going to wrangle all this up. I'm going to yep. own it, but you're going to get all this exposure. <laughs> and you're going to have to tap dance for the rest of your night, and I'm going to have a fucking yacht in five years, right? <laughs> so we're like, well, why? what's stopping us? At this point, the technology had come up about where you could actually start your own thing. And there was podcast networks out there where they, they were doing this thing where they owned a percentage Ooh. of it. Yeah. Wow. Like owned your podcast. And For we were what? telling everybody, going, dude, don't, you don't have yeah. to give that away. But like, um, you see that kind of stuff on YouTube a lot too. Yeah. Right. But, but a, a lot of people from my generation in a, in a weird, like a prison kind of thing, you were institutionalized where you just mm -hmm. thought, I can't own anything. I need <laughs> to go to bigger thing. It's like, no, dude, you have your own TV right here, your mm -hmm. own channel. Um, so we try to do more of a co-op where everybody owns the thing, um, owns their podcast and, uh, oh, that's yeah, so that's basically, and we all hype each other's projects that's and we're Paul cool. Verzi's, um, one of the guys on our network, network from the, uh, the Verzi effect podcast, when he had his first comedy CD come out, 
We all tweeted about it at the mm. same time, and he put out a great album, and that came together, and he went number one on iTunes in both, wow. both the United States and in Canada mm. wow. as an unknown at that point. Mm. And now we just produced a uh, stand-up special for him uh, for Comedy Central, and Comedy Central has bought uh, three more hours from us, so we're going to wow. be produced. Wow. So now, and now we kind of get to pick the people that we That's like, really these, cool. these guys, men and women, that we think are hilarious, so... Um and uh so it's then, you know like... I'm currently uh writing a movie and you know we really? we partnered with yeah. Soapbox yeah. Films and you know you know I'm writing with somebody who isn't with All Things Comedy but if he likes it we're going to drive it through there and just kind of build this thing up and and the whole thing was you know uh to do this trying to do it the right way was was quite a task but we just we just don't we wanted to have comedians to have a, a friggin ray of light that they could mm. go to where everybody wasn't just trying you know to fuck you over like on yeah. like on specials and stuff like the the, the the shit that goes down really that yeah the stuff that goes down is, you mean like p slices of the pie going in all different directions like people having side deals with networks that suck or are going out of business you know that's something that we ran into huh. and it's just like hey every special you, you bring us to you get you get 60 grand so then all of a sudden this guy oh. for 60 grand is now going to tell you hey go to this shithead oh. network oh. instead of instead of like 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 yeah uh, netflix or Crazy. something where where it's going to be seen yeah and it's just like um like yeah that's only the tip of the iceberg and then like you know expenses and all this right. and all this stuff and like sky high expenses with no accountability yes all of that type well the thing the thing was you know back in the day it was like you know i swear to god there were some people that literally had like inside people like tmz has at the airports to <laughs> say you know what celebrities are going through like they would literally have inside people at the network and they would figure out what your budget was because you get in business with a production company and you'd be like what can you shoot this for and it's like well how much money you got it's like well i'm gonna mm -hmm. fucking tell yeah, you that exactly. and they would somehow i swear to god like if you had a million dollars they'd be like uh we did the budget it's gonna be like nine hundred ninety nine thousand. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. and then if you had like nine bucks it'd be like it's gonna be eight dollars and 99 cents like <laughs> they are they always like <laughs> vacuumed up everything but that final fucking eight right. Right. And then you know that they went out and they shot the thing for like 70, yeah. like not mm -hmm. even, probably whatever, whatever yeah. the number was. Yeah. And they just skimmed it. Just took it. Wow. No, that's skimming, dude. They took a giant that's fucking <laughs> shovel out of there. All right. And, um, you know, uh, that's the one thing that, that the only like that the one thing that has been really uh, disappointing getting into the business world, because I know it's not just the mm. business that I am, but just the level of. Of when you say business world, you mean owning or being in... No, just being in the entertainment Okay, entertainment, business. yeah. Because entertainment business has a bad rep, but it's just sure. straight across the board. The uh, the level of st uh, just unabashed stealing mm. yeah. that happens in business... And they is, justify it. Is, in a, you know. Oh, they, they sleep like babies. Yeah. It's, it's so rampant that I don't even... I don't understand people that, like, steal... Like, you, like anybody... If you're a thief... Like you should be working towards getting on the legal side of stealing, mm. because there's probably more stealing on the legal side of stealing. Oh, of and now you don't have to hide the car; it's yeah. all above board or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's just like you know, you see things like uh, Lord of the Rings. It grossed like I don't know how many billions of dollars. Yeah, like the director had to like sue. Like they Did were he really? still they, saying Peter that Peter Jackson sued that they, yeah, they didn't they, pay him. They You're right. They were saying they were not in. In uh, profit, and it's a routine thing. Oh, my I'm God. learning this, you know, writing a movie. I like it that. is, it is a routine experience to be in one side of um, one of these big conglomerates pitching the sequel, while in the other side of the building, in the legal department, you're suing them for not <laughs> paying the first. One. That is so fun. Oh yeah, God. and just like <clears throat> auditing and all of that, all of that. With what they have this shit, I've seen. I've been through these calls where like. You can audit us, and if there's less than a 5% discrepancy, you have to pay for it. Five is good. I usually get, like, 12. How do you, uh, so it's a, how do you fuck up paying me 12%? Yeah. So what, and then, oh, it's if, accounting. It's numbers. Yeah, then you have to pay for the audit. You buy, uh, <laughs> So they kind of gave themselves a license to steal about exactly. 8, 9 yeah. Exactly. That's all that means. I, yeah. I, I saw my Listen, first contract. This is what we legally owe you, but, but we're going to write this in so we can steal this. And then if they're really greedy, they'll actually go... Like beyond it. No, there, there are some. There well, are they have nothing to lose. Fucking except, characters out there. Yeah. The first time I saw that clause, I was like, okay, so I have a five percent discrepancy, which means you're going to take five percent more 
Yeah. Then you then and that is considered should. being difficult if you say that in the middle. I, oh, yeah, yeah, that's the which yeah. to me means what difficult, what difficult to steal from. Yeah, that exactly. That happened to us all the time because yeah. in YouTube in the beginning there was so much of that going on and oh, we would God. not let it slide. And so it was. Well, I got a YouTube like, channel. And I remember they had this thing where if any of your videos get flagged, then. You, Some cocksucker can take your revenue. Yeah, you can. Well, yeah. they said you don't get the advertised money. I, I said, oh, so you don't run the ad? No, we still run it. And it's well, just like, so well, then who fucking gets he's it? He's taking it. What it yeah, means? Yeah. So what is some? I, I would have a whole team of people at YouTube just flagging shit. There are. That's what yeah. they do. There are companies like that. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm dealing with this shit all the time. What yeah. happens is, if you're a copyright holder, and I mention you, like we have a video just talking about something, and I mention a clip, right? Maybe I show it for a split second. So they've got people, probably just some interns, low-level grunts, that just claim it, and they get the money. It's so And fun. they make so much money it's like so that, because they just mass do it, you know? My thing is, when, they, when they're in the meeting, and they present doing that... They present it like they're on a good mission, like... It's a crusade. I'm talking stealing. about when you guys aren't there. <laughs> And they're basically presenting no, they, how they're going they're to... They're on a crusade to protect gonna, their copyright. Yeah. Oh, that's what they yeah. do. Yeah. We, we have to protect our copyright because there's all these pirates online stealing content and we're standing up for ourselves. No, but I'm saying like if, if they feel like what you said was offensive to somebody, they would flag it. Like, and, mm. and for, for, for oh, yeah, that, my shit, it's just yeah, like yeah. that's going to be every clip. Yeah. yeah. It's frustrating, but... Yeah, it's it can be really frustrating, especially when you spend like a whole week working on a video because that's a lot of YouTubers will post like one video a week, right? And then all of a sudden, some asshole is just like, "Mine, that's my money now." How? Like, because they claim they'll claim it because maybe you showed some of their work, and there's a fair use, which means that you're allowed by U.S. copyright. Well, I'm not talking about ripping people off. I'm just talking about you put up your own original content. Yeah, I'm not talking about you know. No, it's it's original content. But you, if we talk about something like, uh, oh. like in a news way, or reacting, or talking, or criticizing, you know, don't sue them. You can. I've, We've we been so what, through what a lot. You have to do, <laughs> yeah. But you, have, but then you have to get that rep out there that you do that. It, this is the bullying thing again. Like, ah, mm -hmm. don't don't fuck with the H three podcast, man. These guys, yeah. they'll, yeah. they'll sue you. It's not worth the headache. We've well, we, been we through a lot. That we was uh, good for you. Uh, yeah, pretty won. big on we YouTube. Won, way, we so. did win. You won. Yeah, we won that's that great. Thing. When's yeah. the movie coming out, man? I, <laughs> I want know. to see that. So that's a feel good movie. <laughs> well, it wasn't feel good at the time, but it was. Uh, maybe, no, I don't yeah. give a shit. Still if recovering from that. But I'm sure this is what like, goes on in show business. Is what? No, no. What goes but on you, straight across all business, everywhere, all the business. Yeah, yeah. The business all money. of war. There's all so the way down to the business of of a stand up special. It's like the people that are always, you know, with the shovel, not skimming, shoveling money out. They're such fucking rich. They're so rich all the time, too. And it's like, they, they just cannot be fair. I don't know. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I, I just wish I could talk to them and just, like, ask them. Well, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not a perfect person. I mean, that's just, you know, where I fuck up in other areas of my life. Maybe this is just their thing. But I, I just, you know, fucking some, you know, college kid out of the money on his on his page i don't know or some new comic on a special mm -hmm. so anyways that's those is basically that's why we started you know all things comedy and now it's just grown into this thing we uh you know we're gonna produce some tv shows we're starting to sign some deals and uh, that's awesome that's so cool. yeah and it's so it's, is it like a management uh no you represent them no no you're we're just all, a conglomerate we, yeah we like a production we can also like um uh, you know, whatever you would want to do. Mm. The soapbox films, they they, they literally end it. It's a, it's a uh, edited, union. Like, yeah, they edited Maybe. like the Muppet movies and all of that. Mm. These guys can handle any bullshit idea that I ever have in there. Mm. So, um, well, all the comics are, I love, I mean, you got, you have so much talent there and your mm -hmm. YouTube channel is amazing. I love, actually we're doing uh, something's burning. Something's burning. Oh, something's you are. burting. Yeah. Bert, Bert, Bert Crush. That's why I'm here. He told me he goes, you got yeah. God bless <laughs> Bert. He's amazing. such a sweetheart. Um, do you watch YouTube videos at all? Yeah, I love YouTube. Really? <laughs> what kind of stuff all you that, watch? I, want, um, <laughs> I like lions killing hyenas. Mm. Oh. It always annoys me that they fucking come over and they take the shit, you know? And then the lions <laughs> end up in the tree, you know? Um, <laughs> Justice. My own idea. I watch Animal that. Justice. I watch um, a lot of musicians' videos, like nobody's doing drum covers of songs, and mm. maybe I'll watch them, maybe I'll learn mm. something. <laughs> um, 
you don't follow YouTubers. I feel like there's two types of people. There's like people that because there's so much great stuff on YouTube, like tutorials and documentaries and stuff yeah, to learn. I, I I watch that shit. I I don't get it. Like you know what annoys me? Hmm. The worst is when there's like, uh, say something happens. Like okay, so you were showing me that clip or whatever the 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 little fellow there sliding on his face, face grind. right? Yes, the face grind. <laughs> so it's just like. It'll just say little person epic face grind, right? Mm-hmm. And then it comes on, and all of a sudden, this guy, okay, you're not gonna believe oh, yeah. there's a rest of it. And I'm just, I'm always like, shut <laughs> up. Yeah, I know what it is. The face there's grind. So I don't need many. you to stick your fucking face. Like, and it's like, this isn't even your fucking content. Mm-hmm. And like, um, there's so many yeah. of those. Yeah. 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 So I'm sure I haven't seen the good ones because there's an art form to all of it. But I always just feel like it's always like, you know, eyebrows up, super high energy, <laughs> <Yeah>. guys. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks for checking in. <laughs> not gonna believe this. Yeah. Well, and yeah. then he starts the show right before. Now watch this. <laughs> I mean, this dude literally sliding. Then he starts showing. Me, he's sliding on his face. It's like, dude, I fucking get it. And it's it's like someone who doesn't know how to tell a fucking story, and it, the thing should be over in like thirty seconds. And now I got to sit through fucking three minutes of your bullshit. That is kind of a meme on YouTube. It was like the tutorials where you're like, okay, I'm gonna show you how to use Photoshop. And then, like, 10 minutes, 20 seconds in, mm-hmm. after describing his whole life story, he gets to the point. No, you know what was the worst? It was Expert Village. Oh, dude, oh. I made a video about Expert. I love Expert Village. <laughs> they were the you worst. Been, you've been around. God. That is, they that, were the worst. Expert that is Village crazy is original that you shit. you brought them up. They were the fucking I want to show worst. you some of my favorite How Expert Village. I used to watch because I was playing guitar, and they were like, so and so Expert Village. This is how you play Expert uh, Village. Ozzy Osbourne, Wait. Fuck, blah, blah, blah. And it was always wrong. <laughs> Hold and on. It always sucked. And it because just, any the expert village was a phenomenon. I love it. We made one of my most made, cherished videos about yeah. looking no at expert. No one was an village. expert. Exactly. No. Nobody was no. an expert. They were. It's tutorials <sighs> about like how to make a cheese melt and, and don't, don't <laughs> yeah. put it in the microwave for yeah. two seconds. And that's the tutorial. And it's two minutes like, <laughs> long. Wait, I got to show you how to flirt. Wait, just I, I hate it. And then they they were like they were like you couldn't get away from them for a while. Here, like you'd go to a search and they just show you just something? all them. Because oh, you mentioned yeah. Expert Village, I think it's important <laughs> to bring you, you know, show you what's up here. Okay. Look at this guy. Now, I've now this video I love because look how much dead air there is. Okay. Look, yeah. That's not that's not him. He'll get blamed. That's not his fault. Well, either way, it's they uploaded it. I mean, they could have cut it for Christ's sake. It is his fault because I think they make the video and then they submit it to Expert Village and then Expert Village puts it up. So here yeah, we go. Criticize the lighting with his shadow on the back wall too. Look at that. You getting seduced? Hi, this is Alice Oh, we got no sound. Oh, I'm a social dynamics instructor. And on behalf of expertvillage.com... How to pick up a girl at a bar. How to flirt with a girl. Picking up women in bars and clubs. Flirting. What is it? Hmm. The basics of flirting is to convey through certain ideas and emotions that you like someone else. Hmm. And hopefully that the other person likes you back. Now, who are the best flirts in the world? They're actually little kids. Now, why is that? Oof. Well, for one thing, wow. they have the best imaginations. I was already feeling <laughs> me too. Now <laughs> I had a feel you going on. You know who are the sexiest people in the world? Yeah. Little kids. Sandbox, and they're talking about some fantastic place that they can go in the, the world. On the wall. Why, right. They're right. using their minds mm. to put themselves in a place that's just the two of them in their own special world, using their imagination. Also, little kids are How do you fearless. do that as an adult? They realize... The date rape drug. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, get her get drowsy. Yeah. Wait, but you gotta get to the... What? What do you want me to show? Oh, uh, when he's like... The eyeball yeah. blueberry thing? I, it's just, it's kind of a long video. Words, if I see a girl with blue eyes, oh, this I is might it? say, Wow, your, your eyes are like blueberries. Wait, can I actually... Can I actually... I'm kind of hungry. Can I... Can I have... That's one thing that you could go into. Oh, that always works. That, <laughs> Can I stick my fingers in your eye? <laughs> my God, he was so hot. <laughs> so hot. Yeah. You know who are the uh, sex? You know who are the best flirts? He had a decent kids. vibe when he said, "Oh my God, your eyes are like blueberries." Blueberries was the wrong word. But went, yeah. Vibe was good. Right. Vibe was yeah. good. But then you start doing the uh, little into the camera, yeah, make you feel really I'm comfortable. I'm gonna squash your fucking eye like a. So grape. these are their experts, anyway. Love Expert Village. Happy you mentioned that. Hey, you remember this lady? Let me ask you about this. I like, I like watching. Just like your hands. You like this? You remember this lady? No, I remember the, the failed videos. The woman stepping on the grapes and... 
Oh. <laughs> that was she just, falls off. And yeah. Like the, <laughs> that was just somebody who never had you know, the wind knocked out of him before, and so she didn't know to <laughs> stop talking. So she's, oh, oh, oh. You know, I used to hear that on Howard Stern all the time, and I never knew what it was from, and I thought it was from like a crazy orgy sound. <laughs> like, yeah. I never knew. And then when I saw it, I got to, obviously, I got to pull it up now. Uh, she's smashing grapes, right? Grape lady. Ric Flair videos. The grape That's lady. That's another one falls. that I watched. Here you go. This is it. You can, if you can find the, the original. Done this is, is it. Right here, these buckets are filled with grapes. What kind of grapes? These are filled with Chamberson grapes, and the winner this Saturday who stomps the most juice will actually win an overnight stay here at Chateau Alon. You ready? Ready to try it? Yeah, sure. Let's go. She's That's stepping disgusting. in a grape bucket. All right, you ready? Give us a three-second time. Here And she falls. She's about so to fall. So what's the deal here? You, there's As a she steps out. 19 million hits. I mean, it is kind of one of the best yeah. things ever. <laughs> Live. They're stomping stay, grapes trying to juice it. It's competitive because you get an overnight stay. All right. If you if you win, you get to stay at Chateau Alain. And what else do you have going on here? Well, if great sounding quite your thing. You can come and spend the day listening to live music, eating international foods, having wine tours and tastings, vineyard tours, seminars, arts and crafts. It's a lot of fun. A whole day. Stop. Oh, oh. oh, 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 oh. I can't, ow, 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 I can't breathe. Oh, is what she's trying to say. Oh, no. I just, oh, it's alive. <laughs> it's just, I mean, who, it doesn't who's get thought better. to put those things up on that platform? That woman is like, what? Yeah. How, how old is she? She's going to be up there. I can't be. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that sound bite, man. I love it. You can't beat it. You remember this lady. You've, you've talked about her. I didn't play enough, but I want to show you. I want to remind you of this. This great lady. There's like your hands. The hand model. I like to say that my hands look good naked. They are really just the perfect neutral toned hands. So the skin She's is the hand flawless. Model. And it's very Remember? even toned. Oh, so I saw. She just keeps well petting her hands. Yeah, yeah. 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 This is very, creepy, very dude. You watch creepy shit. Make. Well, this, this is good stuff. Like, I mean, you know. <laughs> that stuff that we've made videos about. Good care. Star. So, I mean, you're very protective of yeah. your hand. What else is going on in the world? You're very protective. I want to ask you about this. Um, this is one of the first times I heard about you. I was in college, I think, at the time. It was when you were getting booed by thousands oh God, of people I, I in Philly. I was hoping you were. I was like, when you said I, my favorite you YouTube video, I was like, oh, God, not the Philly thing again. Mm -hmm. And then you did the Sherry's Berries. I was like, I love this podcast. <laughs> now I hate you. Oh, no. I love, oh, what I can I do? I love that. I'm joking. I'm fucking with you. Okay. Go ahead, let's do it. <laughs> oh, no. But do you, well, but, but, no. Bring a hat no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to ask were, you. Were booed. I get that booed before. <laughs> you, you've talked about this a lot. It, probably more than the grape lady. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't yes. realize. No, but I go ahead. I let's well, do it. Well, let's now, do it. I, I, frankly, I like you know, making I, I, I like, like making skip it. I like making you uncomfortable. <laughs> well, you what am I supposed thing. to? Well, what <laughs> am I? Yeah, right. Start, you yeah. Know you could, and now, what do you want me to be? <laughs> well, what was going through your head, Bill, when you're getting booed by all those people? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't remember. It was what was uh, going through your head? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> this is going to end up on YouTube. Yeah. This is live. This is going to end up on um, YouTube. Is what I was what I was thinking. Oh, okay. and because uh, everything else on the tour was ending up on YouTube, so that um, yeah, I guess that's what was going. On. So no, I think I thought that afterwards. I'm like, well, that's going to be embarrassing because I didn't know how people were going to take it. I thought people were just going to say, "Oh, you got booed, you fucking stink," and blah blah. I didn't know that people were going to find it funny. Fortunately, <laughs> they did. You did kind of win the audience over. Did you feel that while you were on the stage, or was it just like these people hate my guts the whole time? Because it was no. I I just thought it was a complete failure. Mm. I really? had no idea. And, uh... Well, I don't know how many of our fans have seen it. I'm going to pull up a clip. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh this. my god. We should skip this. No, no, go ahead, play it. Just skip this. I should have been more of, I should have been a better sport. No, you're a good sport. You're doing your thing. You're being authentic. That's why we love you. You're authentic. Now this is just going to, now this, this is, is the kind of thing that somebody who buys a dog does. Right. Yeah. Well, really get me deep down, huh? Get down to the foundation. Uh, um, now this is just going to be about me being uncomfortable showing you this video. I imagine there's a bunch of comments though now going, ah, fuck you, the Eagles beat the Patriots. I would think that there'd be a bunch of that. Someone needs to animate this two years ago. But the the video quality is fucking weird. I'm like, I like, I'm just walking around like, like it's, I just got a cheeseburger. Anyway, they all boo you. 
Let's move. On. Yeah, that's all right. You guys get it. But for me, that was when I first heard about you. Was that a big moment in your career? Like, uh, did you get a lot of recognition from it? Because it kind of went viral back then. I mean, that's the first time I heard of you. Uh, yeah. Um, well, no, I got, I got, um, you know, respect from other comedians, which was mm. probably the thing that I remember most. But um, as far as like people coming out to the comedy clubs to see, I don't think that that happened. I, I mm. the reason when I started drawing on the road was because I did a. Uh, I did a half hour on HBO and I was sitting in for Jim Norton on the Opie and Anthony show because mm. he was doing uh, Lucky Louie at the time when Louis C.K. was at uh, HBO. Mm. So I kind of had those two things hit at one time. And then so I, I was able to kind of get the coasts and O&A mark, not, not the South, but sort of I had the East Coast and then I had like San Francisco I could do well in and then Opie and Anthony, they, they were good right through like Cleveland. So... And then Opie and Anthony also would run like, uh, you know, they you know they didn't have the budget at XM, I think it was back then, to pay us for our appearances on the show. So mm. they would let us literally cut commercials mm. about where we were going to be. And they were really funny. And it was, you know, it was one of the cool, like, it was really cool that they did that. And it was a major reason why, you know, all of us started selling tickets. So I really miss mm. that show. Mm. I really do. How did the comedians react? Because I remember some guy tried to yank you off stage towards the end. He was like, hey, how about the, the next comedian? That happened? I don't even remember that. Here, I got it. I got it. I uh, thought you've seen it so many times. Why would I want to relive that? <laughs> <laughs> I've never right, let's seen it. Let's, let's, let's get out. Let's get out. I've yeah, never let's seen see what, what else we got. I had a uh, headache for like two days after that. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, you were really stressed out afterwards about it? I was. I remember walking around New York the next day, looking at people, thinking of insults. It was not a. Yeah, it was a. It wasn't a wholesome mm -hmm. experience. No, you're getting booed by ten thousand people, so you, you're just kind of getting that fight or flight mode. So I was kind of stuck in that. I remember riding home with Robert Kelly that night. It was and, legendary. And, and, and being I mean, yeah. being nervous about like that it was coming out. He goes, "Dude, do you realize what the fuck happened tonight? You just told the whole city of Philadelphia to go fuck themselves." Yeah. And I was sitting there going like, "Man, when that shit hits YouTube tomorrow, everyone's going to laugh at me and just be like, "Oh, you got booed, <laughs> you stink." That's See, that to me is interesting yeah. because when I watch that, I'm like, it's "This legendary. guy is on fucking fire." Yeah. And he's authentic, and it must feel incredible to tell 10,000 people to go fuck themselves. And like the most poetic no, it, way. It, it felt good to do it, but I, I, the perception of it when I left was what I was, I was worried about. I mean, mm -hmm. I was, wasn't, had just started selling tickets in places, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden there's this clip, and then it, it's going to live forever mm -hmm. on right. the internet of, right. of, of me getting booed. And there's, there's stuff up there of comics having bad sets, mm -hmm. and it didn't help them. And I'm thinking, like, mm -hmm. that's right. going to happen right. for me. I mean, it's how do you get booed and it helps your career? I mean, I, don't, I didn't mean well. This in this case I that did, but I mean, I didn't have yeah. any reference to that. If you got booed. It was like, <laughs> "Boo, you yeah. suck! Get out of the fucking business." Right. So, mm. I was worried if if people were going to understand the kind of crowd that I was in front of. Having mm. said that, like, I love Philly crowds and I also love the city, and I'm happy. You know, I mean, it sucked that my team lost to them, but I was really happy for them that they finally got a Super Bowl. Mm. Well, I love that moment. I love everything you do. The great, great. This is how you turn it around. This is how you turn it around. Uh, where I made you uncomfortable. Now you fucking sit here and compliment me. Jesus Christ. I almost made it through without I making an ass of myself. I got so close. What are you talking about? I had a great time. I did too. I really did. I hope you did. I'm worried about you. I did. Thank God I, you got, I'm playing wait. it up. I'm playing it up. All right. But I'm, playing, that, I'm trying to be funny, but. Uh, we are all I, worried about him. Oh my uh, God! <laughs> now it got real. It's very. You have that dog, no, man. You got something yeah. to live for, right? <laughs> She's just looking at that dog's eyes. Yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah. I'll always have him. He's a great one. Bought him. I bought him from a mill, by the way. Yeah, and you said I appreciate what you people do here at this puppy <laughs> mill. Yeah. Well, like uh, an Instagram photo. Do you got to do that? You stare right into with it. the receipt. Here I am, Ethan, at <laughs> the puppy mill. You can't believe how many dogs they have here. Oh, man. <laughs> By the way, it was kind of, I was surprised when I went to the puppy mill. It was a nice, wholesome experience. The guy, he really cared about the dogs. The dogs seemed to Did well he know you were coming? Or did he, did he I have gave a him a call. I said, yeah, I he said, knew you were coming. Well, people popped in while we were yeah. there. You think they're just like on chain. Like he was, he you was didn't a... see the bait dogs and all that shit. <laughs> there, when you were there? Actually, it was, a it was more of a breeder than like a mall. 
Yeah, it wasn't really like a puppy, right. puppy in a right. shredded newspaper situation. How many dogs no. were there? Only two. Like the one that we got and another one. Sold out. No go. more inventory. There you go. <laughs> you know, they outlawed uh, puppy mills in California. Or not in California, in, in LA. In LA. You can't sell puppies in Los Angeles. You have to go to Thousand Oaks or Orange County. How about that? Didn't know that. All right. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, that is amazing. <laughs> well, I wondered why at the Beverly Center that pet store went away. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's And I thought it was because of people reacting to that. Mm. For some reason, they don't care about the fish that are in there, though, huh? Fish, yeah. <laughs> the gerbils and all those other things that used to be free. Yeah, we only care about dogs. It is true. Well, dogs need something because they took the wolf out of them. So mm. they need somebody to kind of help them Dude, along. My dog would not last a day. No. Not even an hour on his own. You would be. You ever see when they take the fangs out of a cobra? No. Yeah. I mean, I know they well, do that. Well, it doesn't but... know that, so it's still, like, doing all that shit. Well, that's how oh. they, they, you never see that one where the baby just goes up and grabs the snake? They, like, they did a thing where they, like, I don't know if they sewed its fucking mouth shut. It was, it was brutal. Yeah. But the first time you see it, you see this baby crawling up to a cobra. And, you f- and you're, like, freaking out. And then right. it just, it's, like grabbing onto it and the cobra's like basically like head butting it's like the most aggressive like <laughs> that's fucked well, that's a bad lesson for ever. a baby by the way don't play with snakes yeah you would think that would be the direction you're going <laughs> you know what i mean when, you know like they somehow you guys things. you know get yeah. pregnant right is that how you're supposed to say it <laughs> when know. you get pregnant <laughs> like you're a seahorse right um just yeah just uh <laughs> Steer them away from the snakes. <laughs> Have them respect the snakes. Respect the snakes. Respect That's all the I ask. snakes. Yeah. Okay. You little shit. Right. This is my house. I'm running stuff. That's <laughs> right. Throw down. So I want to thank Bill Burr. Guys, go to billbird.com slash events. He's playing at Madison Square Garden November yes, 7th. I'm excited for you. Mm-hmm. I'm thrilled. It's, it's going to be a great be show. Everyone get out there. If you've got Netflix, which I know you do, if you don't have it, your dad, your girlfriend, somebody has got it for Christ's sake. Watch F is for Family Season 1 and 2. 3 is coming out soon. Yes. And of course, and the- thank you to uh, Wild West, Vince Vaughn, Peter Billingsley, Mike Price, uh, Victoria Vaughn, everybody that uh, helps me do Netflix and uh, mm. everybody helps me do the show because I think this is going to be our best season. Ooh, Go I'm on, excited. of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's all good stuff. Cool. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, do I look at the camera too? You, they, I don't think they can see you. We show, yeah, show Bill. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we'll see you on Friday for top of the week. We got a lot yeah. to talk about and kill Tony. I don't know if you're acquainted with those sweet guys. They're going to be here yes, on Tuesday. I know, I know those guys. Very, very funny gentlemen. Good people. Good people, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what are you going to say at the beginning? Tony, you are the greatest, greatest, greatest God, comedian. Can, I, you do I, it to everybody. Don't I you? don't. I swear to God, I don't. I but you know what I'm going to tell him? I'm kidding, man. You know I'm what I'm going to tell him? I'm going to say, I appreciate you, Tony. <laughs> I appreciate I'm going to tone it all the way down. <laughs> tell Tony I love his car. Okay, I will. <laughs> Fucking now I'm curious what it's this car, but we'll talk about that, yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah. on Tuesday. Okay, cool. We don't, right. we don't, the great Bill Bird doesn't have time for that. <laughs> all right. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.